But if there's one student that can do it, he's next. At this time, I am proud to introduce the class of 2013's valedictorian, Tyler McCullis. Hello, hello, hush now, quiet, please, please, goodness, thank you all, thank you. Don't get too excited now. Ladies, please, relax. Well, good evening, everyone, welcome. I would like to begin tonight by thanking all of my fellow classmates. It is an honor to speak before you and to have been your class treasurer. Now we are gathered here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to laud the superb accomplishments of all 240-odd students who are consummating the past 12 years of education by accepting a diploma and bidding farewell to some of the happiest, greatest, most stressful, and earliest times of their lives. I congratulate and shall miss each and every one of you, not only for our friendships, but for the slight idiosyncrasies that make us all unique and exciting. We would be presumptuous indeed, though, if we forgot those who have helped us ascend to such lofty heights as these bleachers and stages. These people have sheltered us from a nighttime of despair, for the night is dark and full of terrors without education. We ought not forget our teachers. I ask now that we turn to them and cheer for their hours of effort. I believe that education leads to success, happiness, and self-actualization. Without their enthusiasm, encouragement, and devotion, none of us would be here. But let us now turn to the greatest teachers in our lives, our parents and guardians. To me, a parent is like a retainer. <laughs> let us say that the glorious day on which the dentists remove our braces is analogous to our birth into this world. From the start, our parents and retainers keep us together, protected and in place. As we age, we require their aid less and less as we develop and stand stronger and more resolute on our own. Then, in our rebellious days, we try to dismiss their influence. We stop wearing the retainer. However, after a short period of youthful neglect, when everything starts to ache, we rush back to their supportive nourishment. We are at a moment now where some of us may find our retainers to be of little use anymore. However, forgetting their powerful, supportive, loving powers will only lead us to disarray and pain. So let us applaud them as well. High school assuredly has caused each one of us rather large amounts of stress and the occasional bout of insanity. Freshman year, we pull ourselves from the awkward, embarrassing moments of middle school and are th thrown straight into high school life. Six hours, a significant portion of our day, are spent learning. That is not all, however, for the school day is then followed by sports and extracurriculars and meetings which consume another fraction of our day. Then we head straight home, unless, of course, we have work or a game or a rehearsal or some other activity. Once home, for me at least, it was homework time. Something that could range for quite a few hours. Then at last, maybe some food and rest. This schedule in itself is enough to cause stress for any person, but throw in a handful of tests, projects, essays, and the levels augment. Then, of course, there are the sporadic social conflicts, relationships, and friends that can push anyone over the edge. But all of this appears to be mere child's play compared to the importance of college applications. So yes, stress, stress ensues, even despair at some moments. And what is the best course through this overgrown forest of obstacles? Well, Everyone will give you their own answer, but I truly believe that there is one certain ideology that can significantly help. 
This theory that has propelled me through the darkest hours of high school springs from the words of author Kurt Vonnegut. In his novel, Slaughterhouse-Five, there exists an alien species by the name of the Tralfamadorians. These extraterrestrials perceive the world in a manner entirely distinct from the human race. They see the world in four dimensions, length, width, height, and time. Since they can see all of time, they have no real sense of past, present, or future because everything is always happening, always taking place, just not now. As odd as this philosophy may sound, it has encouraged me in some of the more difficult, stressful, trying hours of my life. When a new, daunting challenge creeps its way into your life, remember the good moments, birthday parties, friends, the prom, high school classes, sports, tonight. Recall these moments and keep in mind that they are still happening to you. You are still experiencing them, just, well, not now. Somewhere in the fourth dimension, all of your life is taking place. Yes, the bad is occurring as well, but dwell not in such negative burrows. Never forget the great things that have happened to you and that you have done, for they are still and always will be taking place. Simply keeping this idea in mind, I believe, can help one maintain a much more positive outlook on the world. We cannot, however, recall such positive moments unless we first perform them ourselves. The only way that we even have a chance at this is if we try, if we make the effort. Live your life with the thought that whatever you do will always be happening. Do not waste it, my friends. Let us leave apathy behind. It, to me, has no place in our lives, which are brimming with countless potential, especially in these precious years. Lethargy is the enemy to us all. It can infect, destroy, and stagnate our lives. Be passionate, explore, experience, live. Bonai we I sunt. The roads are good, may Yamiki. So we had better travel them. To conclude, my friends, not only are we all celebrating graduation on this wonderful, auspicious night, but we should also be celebrating the birthday of my wonderful father, Christopher McCulis, who's out in the audience over there. This man, alongside my beautiful, phenomenal mother, make all the comments you want, psych teachers, but it's true, <laughs> has raised me to where I am today. To keep it brief, though, I love you, Mom and Dad. I also would be nowhere without my two sisters, all four of my grandparents, and my many other family members. To my greatest friends, fellow students, teachers, and Unite students as well, thank you. I would be nothing metaphysically and figuratively, without all of you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I shall contentedly and willingly yield our time to the next generation of students here. I bid each and every one of my fellow classmates the best of luck. Farewell, and in the words of Dr. King Schultz, Avidasein. Thank you.